download my free legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. When I uh, was practicing scale shapes back in the days when I was building the majority of my skills, um, I looked at all those dots on the fretboard. And, you know, you, you can't learn those just as one thing, right? You look at the scale shape, which is really one scale shape across the entire neck and think, how do I learn to navigate that? And the answer, of course, is one little bit at a time, right? You chop it up into three note per string patterns or cage shapes, you know, two note per string when it's pentatonic. You simply you create these little shapes so you can learn those individually and then learn to combine them afterwards. The problem is that it takes a little bit of, uh, of time to learn each vertical shape, right? You go this and you spend some time there and there, and then pretty soon your, your brain is used to thinking in these vertical shapes. And then we get that need, that want, that desire to be able to play across the neck. And it seems like the way we learned uh, playing across the neck or you know learned our scale is really limiting us from that ability to move across the neck. So what we really need to do there, our solution to that problem, is to spend not an equal amount of time, you know, you don't have to spend as much time integrating all the shapes as you do learning them, but you have to spend a focused amount of time on the integration process of playing across the neck, right? People say, why can't I play across the neck? I learned all the shapes. Well, because you haven't practiced playing across the neck, right? It's like we think naturally that when we learn the bits and pieces of the puzzle, then we can also put them together. But it has to happen so fast that we can't use our visualization techniques and our conscious part of our brain. It has to be automatic because we have to use it, you know. It has to be like that. So it has to be in your fingers instead of in your mind, right? Even though you can see the shapes and see, okay, I got the puzzles now. And now in this video and the following, we're talking about the, the pentatonic scale because that, that's where most people start. You know, you got the shapes down. So why can't I navigate, you know, across the neck? I can see the shapes here. I got them down, you know, most of them anyway, right? But it's because it's too slow, right? You have to be faster than that because when the music is playing, the audience are listening, You have it has to be intuitively just in your fingers. You have to drive the grooves even deeper into your brain so you go to motor skills, right? Automatic motor skills instead of automatic visualization skills or uh, a mental thing, right? Just when, like when you're brushing your teeth, it has to be that automatic. Just try brushing your teeth with, with the opposite hand, right? And see how ugh, awkward that feels. It's because this is not automatic, this is, right? And you need to, this has to be automatic. So what do we do? Well, you, you watch this video and the following six. Uh, because in every single video, I'm going to focus on how to break out of vertical scale shape playing. And I'm going to give you a little exercise, which is not just an exercise. It really is a playing tool every single time uh, of how to move in between all these shapes. It's a challenge, right? Of can you really do this? And can you do it for a week? So in these seven videos, you got seven weeks of challenges. And if you spend one week on each challenge, I promise you, you'll never go back to playing vertically anymore. So I should say that I assume that you have some knowledge of the five K shapes of the pentatonic scale. So go practice those as we, as I show you this uh, right away. And because you have to connect everything to those shapes. Um, so let's begin. The first challenge I have for you that you can spend, and when I say challenge, I mean, you know, not play. If you're improvising, you put on a track. <laughs> Right? And you want to play something, you got a jam track running in the background, or you're just playing a lick when you pick up your guitar, then whatever you play, you play only in that shape, in that key, on that place on the fretboard. So in this case, uh, it's like... Right? That's the first uh, concept I want you to, to adapt to. And you do that only for, a, for an entire week. Unless you have to play with the band and you have to play a solo, you focus on playing in that shape. But if you can't, if you just can't, you know, and you have to play a theme or a melody, well, then you do so, right? But for an entire week, every time you pick up your guitar, you play in this shape. You stay out of the first position minor pentatonic or blue scale shape and you focus only on what I'm going to tell you here for an entire week. It's really simple, but because we're creatures of habit, of routines, of rituals, 
then it's really hard to stick to a new thing for an entire week. But make sure you do. And if you forget about it, this is the rule, number two, right? Number one was stick to the freaking shape for one week. Everything you play, you play in that shape. Uh, rule number two, if you forget about it and you drop out of it for more than, let's say, a minute, right? 60 seconds of playing in the first position blue scale shape because you forget about your challenge, eh, you start over. A new week, right? You take seven days again where you play in only that shape. That's the rules, right? And so you might as well do whatever you can to not forget it, right? Post-it notes, write it on your forehead, whatever. Don't play in the regular shapes. Focus on this. And why, let me just say the last thing here. Why do we do this? Why do we spend an entire week playing in the same freaking shape? Because we need to move into it. If you watch a, a lot of my other videos and talk about this, getting so familiar with something that you can't forget it. Right? Instead of just dabbling with it, oh, that was fun and being good at it, you stay with it. And you demand of yourself that you now replace the old habit of, of playing in the first position, uh, blue scale shape or minor pentatonic with something else for an entire week. What do you do if you want to know a part of town? You know, a new part of town? What do you do? If you have that huge map of the town and you have to learn how to navigate the entire city of Paris, for instance, whatever, you know, the US Paris or the Europe Paris, whatever it is. What do you do? Well, you move into a city, right? You move into a part of it so you know every single street nearby. That's what you do. So move into these shapes. If you do that, you'll actually make a difference. Instead of playing around with it, dabbling with it for a couple of minutes or a couple of days, you actually force yourself to stay there for long enough for you to develop a new familiarity with something new. Right? So that's where you go instead of the old pattern. Right? This is how to do it. This is how to develop these things and break out of the vertical scale shape playing. You can't do it by dabbling with it. You have to absolutely move into something new for an extended period of time, long enough for you to be super familiar with the new. Right? Okay, so let's dive into the first uh, uh, shape here, the first concept of how to break out. I call it octave shapes. Uh, really easy to understand and you can apply it right away. So let's begin. So our first challenge here is the octave shape. And what I do basically when I'm thinking about it is I, I imagine we just take the first position, we're in A minor here. So I'm gonna take the first position, uh, A minor shape. And the, the lower point of that is uh, the fifth and the eighth on the low E string. And then the fifth and the seventh on the A string and um, five and seven on the D string. But I'm only going to think in just imagine first, the first step to creating the octave shape is just to play two strings. So that's the first two I play. And then I move that up, two frets up and two strings down from, this, from the initial note here. Then I get to the octave of A, still the same note, only one octave higher. All right, and then I play the same shape, the minor third there, and the whole tone. It's the same shape exactly as down here. And then I move three frets up and two strings down. That gives me the B string 10th fret, where I play the same shape, the minor third there, and the whole tone. So it's first shape. So I'm basically playing the same thing with the same fingers in the same way, but I'm just changing the set of strings I use. First the two lower, then the two middle, and then the two high strings. So, so five and eight, and then five and seven, and then um, seven and 10 on the D string. 7 and 9 on the on the G, and then all the way up to the 10th, because we have that B string uh, ir irregularity here, we go up three frets now and two strings down, whereas before we went up two and two, right? So we get to the 10th fret, B string, and 13th, and then 10 and 12 on the high E string. So you want to mark that out in your mind and see if you can go back and forth like that between the octaves here, just with that. because that's important to, to focus on, because we're going to add an extra note below the root note of A. I'm going to go all the way down to the third fret in my mind. Um, and it's important to, to stack the whole shape like this. Like I'm explaining it, that's how you see it, that's how you stack it in your mind. First, think of the octaves, which is the same, pretty easy. And the challenge is to play them in the right place, you know, get to that 
note there. But then we add one, a whole tone below the root note. So that gives us, right, first, just think about that. First, three, fifth, and then play your shape. Then we got the second shape up here in the seventh fret, when we're going to add the fifth fret on the D string to that shape. Right? And the same thing up here. We got the tenth and thirteenth, and tenth and twelfth. And I'm going to add the eighth fret below the first note to that note. Now I have uh, three a little bit different shapes. I got, and then same shape all the time. All right. See how, how much of a vertical shape or horizontal shape that gives us? A really large span there. Um, and you can do that in any position, right? Just get this into your mind first. This is the one we're going to focus on. And just slide from the first note to the second all the time. Right? Um, and this is the shape you're going to play in for one week, right? But just for the sake of example, let's just take it up one position just so we have it in two different, so you can kind of apply the same structure to another position. And if I go to the second shape, my normal shape would be in the eighth and tenth on the low E string, and then the seventh and tenth on the uh, A string. So I got that instead of this. Same same scale, just starting from the next note here. So eight and ten on the low E string, and seven and ten on the A string. And I'll play that first and practice that in three different positions. Right? You might want to just use your first and third finger for all the notes. Right? And then I connect that by going one step in the scale below the first note, like I did down here. But in this case, it's a minor third. It's all the way down to the fifth fret, if you start on the low E string here. So I go, right, next shape up here. And the beginning note, so I go down a minor third. Have my third one up here. I go all the way down to the tenth. That's the note I'm adding. But it's important, again, to not rush this. Just You think in these three octaves with an added note to them. Otherwise, it just becomes way, what a, what a crazy shape I got here, right? It creates really a nice overview. So that would be if you were up here, and you can do that for all the positions. So what are we going to do with this? Well, I'm just gonna, you're just gonna solo in it, right? You're going to, in the first one here. So instead of going, and playing your licks in the first position, you're going to go, if you use the blue note, it's right there, right? Right? You're going to use this scale shape, the octave scale shape, instead of your first position, if that's what you go to all the time for an entire week. But let's just uh, come up with a cool way of going up and down this so we can create a cool uh, pattern of movement that we can use to create some a little bit more interesting lines than, right? So what I do is, um, I, if you start here on the A, I go, you simply just pick the first note. I can just play it for you first. Let me just put some distortion on it. Right? And the other way around. So a really nice way of, of, of playing it. Let, let me just take it from the from the top down first. Right? I play the tenth fret, hammer on to the twelfth. Maybe I should play this for you slowly first. And there's a system to this, so it's, it gets pretty easy once you get the system. Pick the uh, note in the tenth fret, hammer on to twelfth, and pull off again. Then hit the 13th fret and pull off down to the 10th on the B string. Then slide down to the 8th and hammer on to the 10th and pull off again. Sounds like this. All right, then you go to the 9th uh, fret uh, on the G string, pull off down to the 7th. And then do the same thing on the D string from the 10th to the 7th. All right. 
I'm picking, picking, and no picking, just sliding in hammer-ons and dwarfs. And then I go nine, seven, ten, seven. And then I slide down and hammer on to the seventh, and then pull off down to the fifth. So I go. Same thing on the A and the E string. Right? Right? Right, you can also slide down to the first note there. So the whole thing. Right? And the other way around, you can play up up again here. You can play. Uh, I'm just gonna start on the A, you can slide up to it if you want. So you basically say pig, hammer on, pig, hammer on on the two lower strings, go to the fifth fret on the D string, and hammer on to the seventh, and then pull off again and slide up to the seventh. So you go, right, start on the third, slide up to the fifth, hammer on to the eighth, pick the note in the fifth, hammer on to the seventh, Take the note in the fifth, hammer on to the seventh, and pull off again, and then slide up to the seventh. Now you're in the new position, really, truly, right? In the octave. Again. Again. From here, I'm just going to do the same thing. I go... Right? Same thing. Once I'm up here, I do the same thing, but I run out of string, so I can't play the whole thing. So once I'm in the 10th fret on the B string, I just hammer on to the 13th, go for the 10th on the high E string, and hammer on to the 12th. All right? Let me see if I can... But actually, the last thing here, right? The hammer on pull up is the first thing of the descending version. So, so now you got... Again. Nice, really fluent way of going up and down the scale without just, you know, playing every single note up there. This will give you a really cool foundation for creating licks. Right? You can, you can simply just practice playing bits and pieces of it and then ending it on, on notes you find are cool. Um, so that's the whole thing. Let me just play it for you. First, the shape. So you can just see the shape. Um, and then let me just play the sequence again. So here's, here's the shape. And then the sequence from the bottom here. And the way down. And the two together, a little bit faster. So remember, 
take me up on this. You know, for everything you play, if you play scale shapes, you practice techniques, you do anything like that, hammer-ons and pull-offs, practice it within this shape for an entire week. And, you know, also practice it with focus. So you go, okay, how, how many times am I going to play this shape up and down? while relating it to my vertical cage shapes here. How many times am I going to do that? When am I going to do that in front of the TV, you know, with the metronome? What am I going to do about this? How am I going to implement this, right? So one thing is to just stay in that shape, whatever you play. Another is to actually practice it, the, you know, playing it up and down with the sequence I provided uh, and improvising in it. So you really get familiar with it. And I would say the more the better, you know. And the more uh, you can, you know, play it at any time in the, in the day, you know, have a little guitar in your car, do whatever, think about the shape, you know, visualize it with the cage shapes and how you go up and down and go from one cage shape to another following this octave shape, right? And if this is too easy for you, pick another place on the fretboard and create your own octave shape within the, uh, within the pentatonic scale, right? So go download uh, the uh, charts here the tabs for the sequence, so you have them. Just that little action of going, downloading and giving it on your hard drive will make it even more likely that you'll remember this challenge for the entire week. And then I'll see you tomorrow, wait a minute, uh, you know, <laughs> in a new lesson. And that lesson will be the next week, the challenge of the next week. But make it, you know, in, let yourself be inspired by the fact that you're getting a new challenge every single day and look forward to the fact that you can now start on the next challenge the next week and let these seven weeks uh, be uh, the, the place where you change the vertical playing and get it rid of it completely. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.